Welcome to InfoGamer, my name's Mark and I want to show you how to create a player movement to put on a marble so you can send it through your maze. So let's get started. Um, I've got my maze built out and my main camera is still messed up as you can see in the game view so let's fix that real quick and type 90 in the X uh, rotation and so let's zero out the position as well so it will be in the center. Um, the, let's double click on the main camera and we want to send it um, up as well so 100 in the Y position should be fine. Double click it again drag it up and it's okay that we have all this extra space for now we're gonna fix that in the camera follow in an upcoming video okay so let's select our player and add a rigid body component to it so you can hit add component type rigid and should add this thing to it the rigid body you can double click your player zoom out a little bit hold control drag the arrows positioning it to the start double click on the player again now that we so we've got it nicely set in one of these uh, square grid spaces and that's just to keep it nice so it's not in a random spot like that you can just have it cool that's just my ocd coming out a little bit but let's get started creating a script the player movement for this and uh and so we've got a scripts folder open and we'll hit create C sharp and name this player movement. Okay, let's open that up in uh, Visual Studio. All right. Now we've created that rigid body. Now we need to access it in our code. And how we're going to do that is declaring a, ver a rigid body variable to hold that. Um, so type private uh, rigid body and then we can name it RB and we want this rigid body to be axed, like immediately connected to this script at the very start that's why we're going to type it in the start function um, type RB equals get component and then carrots parentheses semicolon and in the carrots what are we going to type what component do we want to store in a rigid body component? I gave it away just barely. Rigid body. <laughs> so type rigid body in there. And it should go light blue when you have it typed correctly. Okay. So this is at the very start of our game. When the script is attached to our player, our player is going to grab the rigid body on that player and store it in our RB variable. Now when we go down to the update function, um, update isn't the best to use for player movement because update is called every frame and frame rates change due to lots of game stuff happening or graphics rendering, all of that stuff, and we don't want that to affect our player movement. So let's type fixed in front of this, so it's fixed update function instead. So fixed update is um, exactly set, you know, updates will happen at a normal pattern, and so your player movement won't change over time. So let's get to typing in the rest of our code. Um, we want a new float variable called movement horizontal. And we want to set that equal to input.getAxis. And then parentheses, and inside the parentheses are quotes, and then inside the quotes is horizontal. And then a semicolon at the end. Okay, what this line of code is doing is the get the input get axis is registering a player input on the mouse or on the arrow keys. And since the axis is named horizontal, it's only going to register register the left and right arrow keys or the left and right movement of a joystick if you're playing with a joystick. And it's going to register a value anywhere from one or negative one to one. So say you move your joystick only a little bit to the left, it won't be a full negative one. It will just be, um, you know, like a 
negative 0.5 or something like that. And so it's going to store that value into our new float move horizontal. And now we need to do this with move vertical. So we can copy and paste this line of code so we don't have to retype it all. Change everything from horizontal to vertical. Okay, since the namespace for this get access is vertical, it's only going to be registering the up and down arrow keys or the forward and back for a joystick. And it's going to be putting in a plus one or a negative one into this value. And then we're going to do a vector three to put these values into. So let's type vector three. And we need to name the vector three. So let's name it movement and set it equal to a new vector three. Vector three. And vector threes are set up with the position x comma y comma z semicolon at the end. And I just put the x and y and z in there so it's a good reference. We want the x, the move horizontal variable to be in the x axis and the move vertical to be in the z axis. Because we don't want it moving up and down. If we put this move vertical into the y axis, it would be moving up and down instead of on the plane, the x and z plane. And we don't want the y axis to be moving up and down at all, so we can type 0, 0.0 float f for a good float variable to keep it the same position for the vector 3. Okay, our marble is still not going to be moving. We actually have to add the force to the rigid body of this new vector 3. So let's type rb.addForce, or period, add force, and then parentheses movement. And in the parentheses, we're going to type movement. Okay, now we have enough code to have our player move. So let's go over this code really quick so you guys just understand it super well. Okay, so the vertical is the namespace for this get access. So vertical is only going to register the input on your keyboard of the up and down arrow keys as a plus one if you hit up and a negative one if you hit down. And it's going to store that into our float variable move vertical. It's then going to so this move vertical is going to be whatever value is it's set to in the update. It's going to automatically put it here. So a plus one will go here. And then it's going to store it into our vector three movement. And then movement is called in the add force. And so it will add force. It will add a positive one in the Z axis, which will send it that way on your screen or if it's a negative one, it will send it towards you on your screen in the add force. So a negative one will send it this way on the Z, and a positive one will send it away from you on the Z axis, if that's how you have it oriented on your game view. In the, the comments below, and I will try to explain it in even more detail. Okay, now that we have all the code created and it explained clearly, Let's hit Control S and make sure to save it. Let's go back to our Unity project and make sure our script is dragged onto our player. So player movement, drag it over here, and we should be able to hit play. And when we start hitting the arrow keys, the marble is moving where we want it to. It's still moving quite slow, so we can come back into our script and put another variable in there that will help um, manipulate the speed. So let's type in public float speed 
This is going to be quite easy to fix, and we'll just times this movement by speed. Okay, let's hit save again. And when we hit save, it should put, okay, there it is. And then Spectre, it's got the speed variable because we put public in front of the float. And we can hit 10 on there, and our speed should be adjusted accordingly. Now we have a bit faster marble. Okay, we're done with the player movement. Awesome job on finishing it up. And uh, please leave a comment if you weren't able to get your player movement to work. But uh, also just leave a comment if you have questions or anything that you want to talk about. Also leave a like and please subscribe if you haven't. The next video we're gonna go over camera follow so that our marble won't leave our screen and it won't be so small in our game view. But thanks for watching again. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.